In this video, we're going to introduce graphing the sine and cosine function. The graphs of the sine and cosine functions can be found by looking at the unit circle. So let's find the values of cosine and sine basically on our axes here at 0 radian, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then back to 2 pi. And you see I've um, listed our ordered pairs there. Since we're on the unit circle, we know we have a radius of 1, so we get the ordered pairs around the edges of our unit circle. Cosine is our x value, so cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Cosine at pi is negative 1. Cosine at 3 pi over 2 is 0. And then cosine back at 2 pi, which is the same as 0, is positive 1. So we're creating like, you know, an xy chart, but it's a, a theta y chart for us for cosine. And then I'm going to do the same thing for sine, which is our y values. So sine of 0 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of pi is 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And then sine of 2 pi, right, which is the same as 0, is 0. So I've, I've created these two xy charts. Well, now I'm going to plot these points. And they're going to give me the graph of sine and cosine. So first I have... 0, 1, and pi over 2, 0, pi negative 1, 3 pi over 2, 0, and 2 pi 1. And once we have those points, we connect our points, and that is going to give us the graph of y equals cosine of theta. And then I'll do the same thing with the sine. We have the point 0, 0, pi over 2, 1, pi 0, 3 pi over 2, negative 1, and 2 pi 0. When I connect these points, it's going to give us the graph of our sine function, y equals sine of theta. All of this we can get from the unit circle. You'll notice that as theta decreases past 0 or increases past 2 pi on the unit circle, we get the same cosine and sine values at coterminal angles, right? As we keep going around the circle over and over again, we keep landing at the same spots. So our values repeat at every coterminal angle. That means that the pattern of our cosine and sine graphs repeat as well. So right, this is what we had to begin with. At 0 to 2 pi, but it's saying that if you went around the circle the other direction, we're going to have that same repeat. And we could have gone forward, right? And we would have had that same repeat over and over again. And same deal with the sine function as well. Well, graphs that repeat like this, you know, repeat every so often, are called periodic functions. 
A periodic function is a function f such that f of x equals f of x plus n times p for every real number x in the domain of f, every integer n, and some positive real number p is the period of the function. All right, well, that's kind of an intense definition. When I think periodic function, I just say it repeats ever so often. And how often it repeats is the period. And that's really what, just what this notation here says is that, oh, it's going to repeat that often, every p. Since the circumference of the unit circle is 2 pi, the basic cosine and sine functions have periods of 2 pi. You need to know that. But that's just one trip around the circle, so that makes sense that it's going to repeat. That's what our coterminal angles differ by is 360 degrees or, or 2 pi. The amplitude, right, this is another new vocab word for us, the amplitude of a periodic function is half the distance between the maximum and minimum values. I think of it as the distance from the middle line to the top or the bottom. Our basic sine and cosine functions have an amplitude of 1. See, like this is our middle line. So I always think of the amplitude as, all right, what's the distance from the middle line to the peak or the valley? And we see we get one on either of these functions. So basically, I've just taught you two new parent functions. And now we're going to graph them by transformation. This is one of the reasons I always stress the importance of graph by transformation in college algebra, because as soon as we learn a new parent function, graph by transformation can be applied. So just to recall your graph by transformation, when you have plus or minus a number outside the function, it's a vertical shift. When you have plus or minus a number inside the function, so here, that would be like inside the parentheses following a trig function. This would be the inside. If you have plus or minus a number inside the function, you're going to have a horizontal shift. Multiplication by a negative outside the function, reflection about the x-axis. Multiplication by a negative inside the function, reflection about the y-axis. Multiplication by a number outside the function, that's a vertical expansion or contraction. Multiplication by a number inside the function, that's going to be a horizontal expansion or contraction. And then the order of our transformations uh, matter, right? Horizontal shift, horizontal expansion or contraction. Reflection about the y-axis, reflection about the x-axis, vertical expansion or contraction, and then lastly, we do the vertical shift. We will be combining some of the transformations as we um, go deeper into graphing our sine and cosine functions, and you'll see that in subsequent videos. But here, I just want to show you that all this graph by transformation information that you already have totally applies. The graph of y equals a times sine of x or y equals a times cosine of x is going to have a vertical expansion or contraction. This is multiplication by a number outside the function vertical expansion or contraction. Our graph is going to have the same shape as regular sine or cosine, but it's going to be vertically expanded. So now the range, instead of being from negative 1 to 1, is going to be negative a to positive a where the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of a. So I've got a, you know, a couple graphs here for us. I've got our original parent function in black 
f of x equals 1 times sine of x. In red, I have 2 times sine of x. So that's just a vertical expansion by 2. The y values have been multiplied by 2. In green, we have 3 sine of x. So the y values have been multiplied by 3. And in blue, we have f of x equals 4 times sine of x, vertical expansion by 4. We see all those y values have been multiplied by 4. Now it is possible that we could have that number out in front be a proper fraction, you know, like a half, and in which case we would have a vertical compression. We'd multiply those y values by a half. For b greater than 0, we want to look at y equals sine of b times x and y equals cosine of b times x. See how we have this multiplication by a number inside the function. That is a horizontal expansion or contraction. So if our normal period is 2 pi, if you have this horizontal expansion or contraction, our period becomes 2 pi divided by b. If we recall from graph by transformations, when we have that horizontal expansion or contraction, we always divide all of our x values by whatever that constant is. So that's what's happening here. We're taking our period, which is typically 2 pi, and then dividing it by that b value to account for our vertical our horizontal, excuse me, our horizontal expansion or contraction. So here again in this diagram, I've got just regular f of x equals sine of x in black, and then in red, I have f of x equals sine of 2x. This is a horizontal contraction, so we see that the, the graph is like squished together horizontally and we're actually seeing two periods of it instead of just one. And then in blue, we have f of x equals sine of x over 2 or 1 half x. This is a horizontal expansion, so you see that we only have half of the period in there. If we have plus or minus a number inside the function, we know that that is a horizontal translation. The translation is c units to the right. Well, remember it's always opposite. So if we see plus a number on the inside, we're going to the left. But if we see minus a number on the inside, we're going to the right. It's going to be opposite. With circular functions, we don't say horizontal shift. We say phase shift. And that just has to do with, you know, the fact that it's uh, a circular function and, and periodic. They like to use that term instead. So in black, I have our basic f of x equals sine of x. And in red, that graph has been shifted to the right pi over 4 units. And in blue, our parent function has been shifted to the right pi units. Next up is our vertical translation, right? A vertical shift. We have that when we have plus or minus a number outside the function. So we have our basic y equals sine of x in black, and then if I see plus 2 on the outside, that just tells me to take that graph and slide it straight up 2 units. If it's plus a number on the outside, we're going up. If it's minus a number on the outside, we're going down. Since we already understand graph by transformation, we'll combine some of the transformations when graphing trig 
functions in the next video.